How did they only get 156? Oh, tell me about it. Like, it's just so heart-wrenching for an RCB fan. Like, we were 100 for Zip, and I was thinking, yeah, 215, 220, and not even 170. And you're like, wow. And Virat post-match has gone on to say 175 was par. I would dispute that all day long. Not in charge. Yeah. Oh, well. I don't know. Okay, I should have started. You know, I kept going Padakal, didn't I? And I changed my mind. I should have stuck with him. <laughs> yeah, you should have. Anyway, we'll come to that and you in okay. a bit and just to give you an intro and we can start. All right, so three words to sum up this match. RCB lose again. And I say that because it's their seventh straight defeat in the United Arab Emirates in IPL cricket. And it doesn't bode well because it's shaping up like last season. And we have Mark Butcher, who called correctly before the game. He went for Chennai Super Kings, despite his heart being with RCB. He uses his head and he brings that to the table on Critlytics Man vs. Machine. Mark, you were spot on. We were just talking off air about how they didn't get to a relatively decent target. I mean, 150 seemed like 130 on a good batting deck. What went wrong for RCB today? It's hard to tell, isn't it? I mean, not only not only did they only end up with one five six, but they're only six down. So it wasn't as though, you know, they kind of they were bowled out or they ran out of resources. They kind of had plenty in the tank still in terms of how hard they could have gone. Um, you know, Padakal makes seventy from fifty balls at the, at the top of the order, and you only get just over half more than that. It just it seems bizarre, really. Um, and I can't I can't put my finger on it um, as to as to why that was the case. Um, but they were that they were miles short. I mean, you, you saw the start that, that CSK had, and they pretty much had the game wrapped up after the first after the power play. So, um, a shocker, really. It is a shocker, and it's a tough one to take for RCB fans watching this. But CSK, I mean, post match, Dhoni said that it was Jadeja, Bravo, and Taku who pulled it back, and they did. I mean, if you look at the numbers, it does justify that. But mm. Kohli Particle, 111 for no loss. If you have to really choose a fantasy T20 team, you choose Maxwell, De Villiers, Tim David, Hasranga to really take you to 220 and beyond. It wasn't the case. So was it just poor batting or was it like what Dhoni said, good bowling? Well, I mean, those guys are, are specialists at what they do, aren't they? I mean, Bravo's figures in the end are one, one for 24 um, at Jarja. Uh, you'd bank that every single time to only go at uh, six runs and over. Yeah, um, three for 24, actually. Yeah, sorry, three for 24. So, yeah, <laughs> silly. Three for 24. I mean, that's just, those are those staggeringly good figures. Um, you know, and again, once again, sort of like the old dogs are, are proving that that um, as much as youthful zeal, um, know-how and nous are kind of the the keys, at least they are for CSK anyway. So, um, look, it's bizarre. They, they'll be absolutely kicking themselves. Uh, but I, like I said yesterday, um, my feeling was that I just, you know, it feels like the force is with um, Chennai at the moment and the RCB are kind of sliding back into their bad old ways again. Yeah, and let's see how that really pans out for them because, like I said, it's shaping up like last season. They don't want to go down that route. Um, they, of course, play Mumbai on Sunday and that is a tough one because Mumbai need the points themselves. Then they play Punjab, who... Uh, possibly will need the points themselves. So this comes down to do or die cricket again for RCB. And invariably, when we've seen them in pressure situations, at least in the last three, four years, they tend to choke. Yeah, um, it's it's not good. I mean, put it this way: that they, they don't like playing in the UAE, do they? I mean, <laughs> as much as as much as they've never won one at home in India, um, their, their record in in the UAE is, is 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 pretty poor. So, and then you start off with with teams like um, KKR. Chennai and then Mumbai as your first three games back after you know a terrific first half of the campaign, um, and you start to worry a little bit. Um, it would have been nice if they could have started off <laughs> with Sunrisers and Punjab, but that's that's not the way it is. And if you're going to be a champion side, you've got to kind of come out and and, and jump over these obstacles. Um, I hope they can get it back together, uh, but the signs aren't looking particularly good after today. Yeah, you've got to beat what's in front of you. And RCB have a tough task ahead right now. Chennai, well, they're plain sailing because this win, of course, elevates them to the top of the pops and 14 points, of course. And momentarily, because DC, of course, play in the afternoon on Saturday. So we'll see how that unfolds. But it goes back to the question that I was asking you before. What is wrong with this RCB team? We'll come to your predictions right now because there's so many people right now infuriated with 
Virat Kohli, maybe A.B. De Villiers and Glenn Maxwell. Do you think those three should be taking the blame or is it just the team holistically should probably be, you know what, it's our fault? Yeah, look, I of course, when you, when you win as a team, you lose as a team, of course. But traditionally, RCB have always kind of looked to two or three, maybe even four superstar batters, hitters, um, you know, to, to win games for them, to post big totals, etc. And at the beginning part of the campaign, not only were they making the runs, they were also able to defend them as well. And everyone thought, including myself, wow, I mean, this could be the, the year. I, I don't know what happens. I don't know whether people just kind of get starstruck by De Villiers and Coley and maybe to a slightly lesser degree, Glenn Maxwell. And they kind of leave it all up to them um, to be the ones to, to, to go out there and make the runs. And when they don't, that such is the panic that spreads through the team that you kind of end up not getting a result. I don't listen. If I knew, if if I knew, then then Virat Kohli and the and the RCB management would have sussed this out years ago. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, you know, Virat's given up sort of white ball captaincy. Um, you know, maybe maybe the, the the RCB thing is not working out for him. Maybe he might have to think, God forbid, of of, of going off and playing somewhere else, and they replace him, and 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 everything is well again. I don't know. Um, I hope I think they can turn it around because they're, they're, again on paper they look a, they look a much better side, a much better balanced side than they have done in in many years. Yeah, and if there was ever a reason for Virat to quit back and see, it could just be the toss because he ended up losing one more again. He's not just had the double the green in that regard. Let's see how you turned out in terms of the predictions because, like you said, Parikal is a man that you chose and then you bought that choice and you went for Abi De Villiers. It wasn't a B. But let me just play devil's advocate here. I know Padikal went on to get 70 or 50 balls. Is that too slow for an opener in the toughest T20? Because at the end of the day, we're talking a huge chunk of the innings just for 70 runs. Yeah, potentially. Potentially. I mean, you know, Virat himself, what was he, 53 from 41? So neither of them were yeah. flying. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I would... I would I would stop short of laying the blame at a, a young man's door who's only just sort of making his way in it, that's for sure. Uh, bowlers, because it wasn't their day, but perhaps for the CSK guys, they could turn back the clock and say, you know what, we have Bravo in the house and he was bowling those perfect Yorkers in this format. Is that a great sign for them going ahead? Because he got a little bit of form in the CPL and then he's come well-oiled into this IPL, so to speak. Yeah, yeah well, an another winner's medal from... For DJ Bravo with uh, some Kits and Nevis Patriots comes in full of confidence. Um, I, I would have said in the last, I don't know, I, I, I covered the CPL, um, you know, right up until I think 2019 season um, was the last time I was there. And he, he'd struggled with, with injuries, bad finger injury, and everyone kind of thought maybe that the, the magic had gone um, for him bowling at the death. Um, but, he's, but he's fit, 100% fit, and is kind of a, as good as he's ever been. And as I said, you kind of you ally the the athletic prowess that he's always had um, with the, with the know how of all of that T20 cricket and all of those T20 winners medals, um, and you've still got a force to be reckoned with there. Um, you know, he's shipped. You know, bowling at the death in in T20 games, he's kind of he's taken he's taken so many wickets, but you always felt as though he was going to go for plenty of runs. That's why the figures today are startling. You know, three three for 24 at Sharjah. I mean, that's a, that's worth five for six for. Yeah, and unfortunately, no one called Bravo in terms of critics or you, Butch. But in terms of predictions, it was 1-1 in the end because both of you guys got CSK right. So there's nothing to split in terms of this winner uh, and, and this contest, I should say. Uh, finally, just before we wrap up this one, it's a stat of the day. And this one's a real puzzling one. Now, this is the third lowest score for a team after having a 100-run opening partnership. It was KKR in 2012 against Pune who scored 150 in the first innings after having 113 run opening partnership. Now it comes back to that initial question, right? You get 111 on the board in what 13.2 overs and you end up 157. No league in the world would accept that. No, no, absolutely not. I mean, even even if you go down to the to the most basic measure and say you get 50 50 from the last five when you're sitting. Um, you know, the, and they were right, what was it, 13 something overs. So they, they still had they still had 10, 10 balls to go before they were into the last five. You should still make 170 from where they were. Um, and that's just doing, that's just doing the, the bare minimum, really. Uh, so, no. I mean, the, the, the fans would be absolutely spewing, um, and quite rightly so, I think, with that. 
Yeah, and catch us on cricket.com for all things related to the IPL. Because at the end of the day, you guys have Mark Butcher, we have Jared Kimber, Brian Lara's coming back. We had David Gal. We're nearly hitting 11k subscribers. Keep subscribing, keep watching. RCB fans, sorry, because I feel for you guys. It's a tough one to take, but it's a good night for me and Mark Butcher. <laughs>